Performing a manual install of Windows 10 works well if you're doing a one-off install. So I'm just installing one machine or maybe a couple of machines. But if I'm going to install a lot more than that, if I'm going to do a major deployment, I probably want to take advantage of some of the tools that are available. And there are a bunch of tools for deploying Windows 10. So a couple of them that we're going to look at is the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, the MDT, and the Automated Deployment Kit, the ADK. So let's start with, now I've got a brand new install of Windows 10 here, a little evaluation copy, and I'm going to take and set this up as if I were going to use it as a technician workstation for planning and monitoring deployments. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, or MDT. So I'm going to search for MDT Download. Both of these, by the way, are free downloads. So here is the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, MDT. Now I want to show you something here. The Microsoft Deployment Toolkit is for Windows Operating System Deployment. Details tells us all about what it does. What I want you to see here is the system requirements. Now, you can install this on a Windows server or a Windows client. Either one will work fine. But there are a couple of requirements here. The Windows ADK for Windows 10 version 1809 or later is required for all deployment scenarios. In other words, you've got to have the tools in the ADK in order to use the MDT. It doesn't come with notice. It's only like a 20 meg download. If we're going to do a zero-touch installation or a user-driven installation scenario, in those two, we're also going to need Configuration Manager. So depending on what you want, the uh, Deployment Toolkit is going to be helpful for uh, creating your deployment scenarios, but you're going to need the tools that are in either Configuration Manager or ADK. Now we're going to start by getting the ADK. So I'm just going to open up another tab here. I'm going to search for Download Windows ADK. This is our automated deployment kit. So Windows ADK Download, the Assessment Deployment Kit. Now this downloads a little setup file down here. It's fairly quick. Uh, download, but it's not the whole thing. It's the setup file. It's going to download the full gigabyte download here in a minute. So we're going to specify how do we want to do this. This is, assumes, by the way, that we're going to install this on the local machine. We can, or we can download the deployment toolkit for installation on a separate computer. So think of that as if I'm going to do this for four or five different technicians and I want them all to have the ADK but I don't want to download it five times then I can use this and download it and share it out. So this is if I'm going to download and install locally. So we're going to go ahead and do that one. Now the next thing after we respond to the privacy questions the next thing is going to be what do we want to download. So all of these are different tools that are in the assessment and deployment kit. Notice that most of, well not most of them, about half of them are in selected. So if you click on them, it's going to tell you over here what this is. So the application compatibility tools, 7.2 megabytes, its purpose is to help you mitigate application compatibility issues. It's going to include these tools. The deployment tools, which is selected, is going to include all of these tools. So Windows System Image Manager, uh, the Deployment Image Servicing and Management, or DISM tool. This is a very, very powerful tool for managing uh, system images. The pre-installation environment, and it tells you, you know, like this one requires that you have the deployment tool selected. All right, we're going to go with the default installation just for this demo. You could go through and go through each one of these and pick the exact tools that you want and not do the ones you don't, and that might save you a little bit of space. We're going to go ahead and just do the default. So we're going to click Install. Yes, we're going to allow this to make changes to our system. All right, this is going to download... It's a pretty significant download, and this is going to take a while. So you're going to see a little progress indicator here. And then down here, and I find this more interesting, the progress indicator, telling you what it's doing at every step of the way. Um, it will take it a little while. And so we're not going to hang out here and wait for it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to let it keep running. And once we get this download done, then we'll come back and we'll pick up our video from that point. 
Okay, so our assessment deployment kit has finished installing. So we can click here to learn more about it or just click close. And then I want to show you where that's at. If you come down to your start menu and go to what you're looking for is Windows Kits. So you can scroll all the way down till we find Windows Kits right here. Windows Kits and then go ahead and expand Windows Kits. Now, something to be aware of is a lot of these tools, well, some of these tools, are command line based. And so that's what this is, a deployment and imaging tools environment. Basically, it opens up a command line environment and preloads some of the PowerShell modules that you'll want. And so like DISM is a command line tool. The deployment and imaging something manager. Um, you do have some GUI based tools in here as well. So the Windows System Image Manager, you've got the Windows Imaging and Configuration Designer. So some of these tools are going to be GUI tools that are going to be based here. Some of them are going to be command line tools that are going to be accessed here. Okay. Now that we've got the AIK installed, or ADK, uh, now that we've got the ADK installed, we can come back to the Microsoft Deployment uh, toolkit and we can download and install that. So uh, we're going to do the X64. Notice it's only about a 20 meg download so it's a whole lot faster than doing the ADK. But it's just a toolkit that wraps around the ADK and you'll see it downloading here. We're about halfway there already. Ready. So when that gets downloaded Almost there. All right. Scanning for viruses. And as soon as it is ready, which is almost ready, it's just taking a minute here to scan. Okay. As soon as it's ready, it should open for us. Here we go. And I'll go ahead and close this because I'm done with it for the moment. All right, so the Windows Deployment Toolkit Setup Wizard is ready to go. So we're going to click Next. We're going to accept the license agreement. Next and Next. I don't want to join the program at this time. Install. And yes, we want to give it the option. All right, so this is going to install for us real quickly. Now, once we get the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit installed, it's not quite ready to go yet. So we're going to have to do a little configuration to it before we can start using it. So we're going to go to our Deployment Toolkit. And let's actually find that. It's going to be the Deployment Workbench is what we're looking for. But let's go ahead and find it down here. So here is the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. And in the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, we have the Deployment Workbench, the UI Wizard Designer. We've got the Customer Feedback and Configure Config Manager. So let's go to the Deployment Workbench. And yes, now this is going to open up a Microsoft Management Console. Uh, the Microsoft Management Console application and then load the snap in that we need for the deployment workbench. So when it comes up, we actually have very little. So we've got the, the uh, toolkit overview, we've got the information center with some documentation, which is always really helpful. And then we've got the deployment shares. We have nothing under our deployment shares at the moment. So let's configure a new deployment share. And we can right click here on deployment shares and go to new one or we can come over come over here, get to the right spot and do a new deployment share. Either one works. If you have a deployment share on another system, then you would open the deployment share here to so go to open deployment share and then you'd put in the path to the deployment share and some other information about it. Now, we don't have one because this is our first system. So you'd use this if you're managing a deployment share somewhere else. So we're going to create a new deployment share locally just so we can see what it's going to entail. So this is going to be our share path. So I'm going to make it C colon backslash deployment. I can also use my uh, browse and browse to the location. And if I've already got a folder set up, I can find it that way. So I'm going to click next and then the share name. Now this share name, it's going to be the UNC path is going to be the machine name and then 
whatever we put as a share name. And then I want to point out this, that little dollar sign at the end. Now, that little dollar sign means this is going to be a hidden share, which means no one is going to see it when they browse to this computer. Now, let me give you a couple of caveats with that. So that deployment share isn't going to show up in a browse list. So if you do net, view, somebody's computer, you browse over to it using the GUI, you're not going to see that share because that dollar sign means it's a hidden share. And all Microsoft operating systems play by these same rules. And if they see a share with a dollar sign, they just don't display it. Now, you can still connect to it, but you have to type in the UNC path. You can't browse to it. Now, I say all Microsoft systems play by that rule, and they do, but Linux systems don't. So if you have a Linux system on your network and they use SMB uh, or Samba, which is the Linux SMB client, to browse to this server, they are going to see the deployment share listed. So the point is that dollar sign is going to make it a hidden share. Windows systems won't show it but Linux systems will. So realize if you do the share and it doesn't show up, that's why we're not seeing it, but don't rely on that for security either. So I just shortened my share name to deployment because I'm gonna have to type this in if I wanna access it, right? I'm gonna have to go into my file explorer and type backslash backslash the server name backslash deployment dollar sign. All right, so let me go ahead and click, that's if I wanna to browse to it. I'm gonna click next, I'm gonna set a descriptive name, Standard one is fine. MDT, Microsoft Deployment Tools, Deployment Share. All right, that's fine. Now, here's where it gets fun. When performing deployments, the behavior of the deployment wizard can be customized by turning various wizard panes on or off. These are the wizard panes that we can turn on or off. Do we want to ask if a computer backup should be performed? Do we want to ask for a product key? Do we want to ask to set the local administrator password? Do we want to ask if an image should be captured? Do we want to ask if BitLocker should be enabled? So we just turn on and off the functions that we want here. And just for fun, I'm going to not ask if the computer should be backed up. I'm not going to, or I am going to ask for a product key and an administrator password. And I'm going to ask if BitLocker should be enabled, but I'm not going to ask if an image should be captured. So you just set whatever options you want here and then click Next. And then here's our summary. This is where we're going to, is an upgrade, share name, all the different options, click next, and then it is going to generate the deployment share for us. We see here a list of things that it's doing. Here's a progress indicator. And when it gets done, we are going to confirm. Now, just so you're aware, I can use a save output here to show, hey, this actually did work. The other thing you can do is this little button over here, View Script, lets you view the PowerShell script that created it. So if you need to replicate this somewhere else, then you can just take this little PowerShell script, copy it, and run that uh, PowerShell script somewhere else, and it will do a... Uh, exact replica of what we just did with the wizard. Nice thing about doing it that way is you know it's going to be the same every time. You don't have to worry about checking or unchecking a box accidentally. So we're going to finish and that's going to create our deployment share. So now we have our deployment share and here under the deployment share is where things start popping up. So we can set applications, operating systems, out-of-box drivers, packaging, advanced configuration, and this is where the fun begins. Or we can set up operating systems to be deployed and applications, and at this point, the MDT is fully configured and ready for us to start using. Now remember, the MDT, MDT relies on the tools of the ADK. Boy, that's enough acronyms for you, isn't it? The MDT relies on the tools of the ADK, so you've got to install the ADK in order for this to work. Also, for the zero-touch installations or the user-driven installations, you also have to have Configuration Manager. So, now that we've got it set up, we're ready to start. We've got our technician computer set up. Now we're ready to start creating our uh, tools that we're going to use for a larger-scale deployment scenario.